What is up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Coming at you with yet again another perfume experience upload. And today sticking with the theme of samples. Yes, I'm getting into a lot of samples because I like variety and I'm going for those perfume olfactory experiences. So, uh, without further ado, for today's uh, olfactory experience, we have Melix Civet Cat Ship. And yes, this one, I've already sprayed a little bit on my hand. Um, <laughs> this one is a banger. And if you are in the uh, frack community, you will always hear about this if you're ever looking into uh, civet perfumes that are natural based ingredients. So, uh, also, I don't know if it's Melig or Melage, um, so <laughs> don't quote me on the pronunciation, but uh, without further ado, what I'm going to do is I will walk you guys through. He doesn't really use any musings, but he uses some quotes uh, from poetry or some famous people and then goes into the notes. Um, I mean, again, this is really just for everybody's reference, I guess. Um, this is what your typical uh, Malik sample presentation looks like. And uh, it's, it's really nice. The sprayer kind of <laughs> squeezes perfume out on its own a bit. But, uh, God, <laughs> I'm getting stoked on this one just because of how good it smells. Okay. So he has a musing or some sort of uh, quote from Pablo Neruda, the love sonnet. And it says, I crave your mouth, your voice, your hair, silent and starving. I prowl through the streets. Bread does not nourish me. Dawn disrupts me. All day I hunt for the liquid measure of your steps. Okay. Now, for the civet cat chiffre. What are the notes? So for the top notes, we have Italian bergamot, Russian clary sage, and French lavender. For the middle notes, there's Moroccan rose absolute, there's Indian jasmine, and there's Madagascar ylang ylang. For the base notes, there's Ethiopian civet musk, there's German musk ketone, and there's New Zealand ambergris. Okay. Before we get started, I already smell it, it's fantastic. Um, as per tradition on this channel, we're grabbing some cafe, as you can see, and today's coffee bean is from Panama. amount of coffee I consume, I don't even know how I'm still alive, but okay, let's get started with this. So I'm about halfway through this sample, um, if the camera captures that. And uh, all right, here we go, here we go. Uh, we're gonna go with a bit of a spray. Not too much because uh, Melik's stuff, uh, and I'll talk about that in performance later, tends to be potent. And yeah, a little bit goes a long way. <laughs> so in terms of what the spray looks like, if the camera can capture that right here, you guys, it's very clear. So this is an Eau de Parfum. He does make an oil-based version, uh, but this is the Eau de Parfum. So not a lot of residue there. And um, just... You know, your typical Eau Parfum, it's very watery. Now, let's get on with the scent experience. <sighs> okay. So this is very delightful. It's very traditional, old school French perfumery. Um, exceptionally well blended. 
okay? There is a lot going in here, so it's very hard to pick on what's going on just because of how well blended it is. But you let's go through the notes. Italian bergamot. So bergamot is a citrus. Yes, there is a citrusy quality to this. Uh, and it's it's very obvious it's one of the easier citruses out there compared to a lot of the other frags I've smelled where you can pick on it. There's the Russian clary sage. So sage is used in Italian cooking a lot. You've most likely had it in soups, in chicken marinades. It's also lit up and used sort of like incense. I can get that. There's a bit of an herbaceous greenish touch there. French lavender. It's very interesting because you can pick on the lavender here, but it's very subtle. It's not like intense in your face and aggressive like some of the other perfumes I have. In terms of the middle notes, there's Moroccan Rose Absolute. Yeah, so there is a bit of rose in there. You can certainly pick on that. It's not your typical sort of jammy rose, but more like a fresh rose scent as if you were to walk up to a rose and smell it. Indian Jasmine. Possibly it's there. It's very hard to pick on it just of, because of how blended it is. Madagascar, Ylang Ylang. I get, this one, I don't quite know what Ylang Ylang on its own smells like. But, hey, if it's in there, it's doing a great job. Um, for the base note, there's the Ethiopian Civet Musk. And yes, you do get the civet. You get this beautiful, creamy, soothing, touch to this. Uh, there's a bit of an animalic facet, but it's so, so subtle, so understated. Um, it's just beautiful. And it sits there on the background, giving this creamy, luscious, delicious uh, touch to this perfume. Nothing pissy at all about this. Not a hint of pissiness whatsoever. It's such a beautiful civet in here. And my understanding, having read the Melig website, is that he does source his <coughs> civet from an organic civet farm in Ethiopia that treats the animals humanely. Um, again, I've read that a while back, so maybe don't quote me on it just from a fact point of view. But... Uh, if you do a quick research online, you're gonna find that a lot of the um, civet farms coming out of Ethiopia as of recently are humane certified and they have a lot of inspections going on and whatnot. Uh, so typically speaking, if you're gonna get natural civet, make sure to do your homework just so you know, you know where you're sourcing it from and the animal doesn't really suffer. Um, and the process is very interesting when I read about it. They basically <laughs> go to the civet and they take a spoon and they squeeze the um, anal glands and they collect the cream using that spoon. And it typically yields about like one or two teaspoons. It's very interesting. Um, <laughs> it just makes you think, who was the first person ever to think, you know what, it's a good idea for me to take a spoon to the civet's ass and kind of collect some cream <laughs> and then use it in perfumery. Um, man, people are amazing just because you got to really be thinking outside of the box to, to get to that point. Okay. German musk keton. So I'm not sure what a musk keton on its own would smell like. Uh, however, there is musky facets to this for sure. And it's not overly whelming. Like it's not this humid musky sort of heavy oppressive in a way musky tone not at all it's just enough there to make it really you know sort of sexy uh then new zealand ambergris 
yeah, there is a touch of fizziness and freshness that sits there in the background. It's very subtle. It's not very loud. Uh, it's not overbearing. And uh, yeah, so that is it with respect to the notes. This is just really, really nice. As I've mentioned earlier, traditional French perfumery at its finest. It's quality ingredients for the most part are natural. Uh, again, the carrier is alcohol. However, there is an oil based version of this. And if you are in that style of perfumery, you're going to have a lot of appreciation for it. The civet here is not overbearing at all. It's very nice and subtle and sits in the background in terms of uh, how good is this as a masculine or a feminine leaning? I'm gonna say actually this scent is neutral, gender neutral. I don't really see it as, or orientation neutral. I don't see it as either masculine or feminine. I think uh, be it a male or a female, you can pull it off fantastically. Um, now, it does have a bit of this traditional French barber cologne touch to it. So some can argue that it is more masculine leaning. However, I think there are enough notes in there to accommodate both the sexes being, you know, feminine leaning or masculine leaning. In terms of how you would wear this, I would say that this is a formal wear scent. You're gonna get your best results out of this best bang for your buck wearing it on a suit or a formal dress or formal attire that's what really works fantastically with this now in terms of this being a morning or evening scent to be honest you can rock it both but i think the civet shines best in the evening um so i would say if you're gonna go out to a cocktail party this is a perfect scent if you're gonna rock a tuxedo even better great scent to wear on a tuxedo but even though it works you know through the day or the evening i think this is more of an evening scent uh that's how i would use it now with respect to seasons i think you're gonna get the best out of this during the summer and spring uh it's not too musky or warm or intense for fall and winter wear you still can enjoy it fall and winter however um i i do believe it shines the best during the spring and summer that's when i enjoy it the most right now it's winter um uh, in the northern hemisphere and while you can wear it out it's just this perfume needs heat you need heat coming from outside of yourself and heat radiating from within yourself outwards for this really to shine. That's when the civet, the musk come to play and they're complemented by the florals, especially the indolic jasmine, as well as just the other facets of this. There's a lot of fresh elements to this too, like the ambergris and the uh, citrus bergamot. So these are sort of notes that come to life in warm, uh, temperatures so I prefer this for the summer and the spring however you won't go wrong uh, wearing it also during fall or winter now performance I find with Melig's performance is it's not beast mode but it can be brutal depending on how many sprays you put and I'm not really sure why that is the case um, because there's a lot of natural ingredients here. There's the alcohol carrier. So in terms of performance, it, it, it's a weird one. It's not beast mode, but it's strong performance. Projection wise, yes, people will smell it off of you from a distance. Uh, you will not have issues with that. And I'm talking here uh, performance wise from my subjective perspective, uh, you know, just going by how my skin reacts to the scent. So people do pick it. Uh, up from a distance they'll smell it walking towards you so it projects far again not be small but fairly strong trail and silage in terms of a trail yes you will leave trail it will not linger for long however there will be trail uh, behind you 
you know, wherever you've been in terms of silage. And that's, as I mentioned, the lingering. Uh, it does not linger for long, but it will stay there for a bit. People will recognize that you have been in a certain spot uh, just based on that scent if they recognize it as your signature scent. So overall, performance wise, you know, it's fantastic. Uh, in terms of pricing, for what you get relative to a lot of other brands, the pricing on Melik's products is just fantastic. If you've ever wanted to dabble into old French perfumery or old Middle Eastern style perfumery using high quality ingredients and very little sort of processing in a way, relatively speaking, the price point for Melik's perfumes are amazing. The, the value for your buck is fantastic. And it's just the products are divine, divine. There's also a bit of a baby powder facet quality to this, which is typical also of civet. And this is why I like civet. It's just like a, it's reminiscent of, of a lot of skin related scents. And it's just so classy, so elegant, so refined. Um, and it's also mature. I don't think if you're a younger gal or guy, you're gonna have a lot of appreciation for this. But if you're a more refined, stable, mature gentleman or lady, this is such, such a good scent. You will not go wrong with it. So elegant. Um, and yeah, I, I love this. I love it. Uh, again, it's one of those perfumes on my list to obtain a bottle off. Right now, it's just a sample that I have, but fantastic composition. You cannot go wrong with it if you are a civet lover. Um, as I always say, you know, get your nose on it. If you like it, get your wallet on it. Enjoy it, you know, <laughs> get out there and have experiences and scents are one of the ways you can get to experience the world. So why not experience the world from so many different perspectives and just have as many experiences as you can. Anyways, I digress. I'm talking here a bit too much. Um, this will be it for today's upload. As per usual, guys, really appreciate your time and attention. Uh, before I go, let me know in the comments um, what you think about Milik's Civet Schiffer. Uh, what's your experience with it has been? If you have any other recommendations for civet-based scents, the more natural, more oil-oriented civet, uh, civet scents, the better. That's kind of what I'm after. I really enjoy civet, so love, love this. Uh, but anyways, uh, this is it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.